Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tactical Frog Sub 300T V2. This watch is available from watchdives.com for $179 US dollars. You can use the discount code WR4K to get 10 US dollars discount off any watch on watchdives.com, providing the price is over $179 US dollars. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the Tactical Frog Sub 300T V2 comes in this black plastic Pelican style case. I like this style of Pelican case. They're very durable and practical, and as you can see, both halves of the interior are lined with two foam panels, which protects the watch in shipping. With regards to the other items, one gets this plastic warranty card, and I'm pleased to report that as with all watches from watchstyles.com, the Sub 300T V2 is covered by a three-year international warranty, which is very reassuring. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Tactical Frog Sub 300T V2. The watch is clearly on a mask to the Doxa Sub 300T, and it does a very good job of that because it has very similar proportions. 43mm case diameter. It has a lug-to-lug -lug measurement of 44.3mm, a thickness of 13mm, and it has a lug width of 20mm. The beads of rice style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs, down to the two button push flip lock clasp and as you can see the flip lock clasp is signed with tactical frog and the brand emblem to a high standard beautifully laser engraved good foam resistance to the two button push triggers now minor criticism to the clasp it only has three micro adjustment holes and as you'll know from my previous reviews i'm often critical of this i like to see clasps with four or even five micro adjustment holes to allow for better fine tuning of the bracelet length but however three is the minimum and it is acceptable the flip lock is well executed, there's a scallop to allow for one's thumbnail or fingernail to fit underneath the flip lock clasp and the two button push triggers have a good firm resistance. Solid milled stainless steel interior, brushed satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks of the clasp, finished to a high standard so very impressive. Good positive click when one closes the two button push flip lock and good positive secondary click to the flip lock itself so it's a well executed functional clasp. So, with regards to the rest of the specification, double dome sapphire crystal and we have blue tinted AR coating. Now, if I tilt the piece at an oblique angle, you can see the double dome sapphire crystal is very aesthetically pleasing. It has a nice lip which projects above the brush satin finish stainless steel bezel. So, very eye catching profile to the double dome sapphire crystal. And I like the blue tint of the AR coating as you can see when I tilt it in the light. It's very aesthetically pleasing looking at the blue hue. It does a very good job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the double dome sapphire crystal. Now this is the V2, so that means version 2 of the Sub 300T. And there are some notable enhancements. I'm pleased to report that Tactical Frog have responded from feedback from collectors that purchased the V1. And they have made several changes to update this V2 version of the Sub 300T to improve it. The first notable change is the dial. On the V1, it said Tactical Frog above Automatic and Divers 200 meters. So they've deleted Tactical Frog and that has cleaned up the dial. It now just has the Tactical Frog brand emblem at 12, but it doesn't state Tactical Frog at six o'clock. So it's cleaner, less cluttered, less busy, and I think it's an improvement. Another notable improvement is to the bezel. Now, often collectors were very critical of the V1 because it said tachymeter on the bezel. Now, with a dive piece, obviously tachymeter doesn't make sense. Tachymeter scales should be used on chronograph pieces. So they have deleted tachymeter from the bezel and they have now substituted it with feet, which makes more sense because this is clearly an homage to the Doxa Sub 300T and that had the same feet markings on the bezel as well as the minute indexing. So that's an improvement. The feet markings look better. It looks more like an homage to the Doxa 300T. Another notable upgrade is they've moved the position of the loom pip. On the V1, the loom's pip was in the inner portion of the bezel and that's fixed, it doesn't rotate, so it didn't really make sense. But on this V2 version, they have moved the loom pip to the outer rotating section, which does make sense because this is a dive piece. And they put the black dots on the inner portion, which doesn't rotate. So it looks closer to the Doxa Sub 300T again, which this is an homage to, and it is an improvement. So I like the feet bezel, and I like the loom pip on the outer rotating portion of the bezel. 
Another notable improvement is to the N-Links. Now, many collectors that purchased the V1 reported an issue where they found it difficult to fit a rubber strap to the head of the piece because the holes in the lugs were very close to the case and that meant that it was difficult to engage the spring bar fully into the holes in the lugs. So Tactical Frog have responded to this. They have updated the male end links to female end links, as you can see. And that means it's now easier to engage the spring bar into the holes of the lugs. But the other thing that's improved is if you look at the female end links, they actually pivot more. On the V1, the male end links projected longer and that extended the effective lug to lug measurement. And it meant that the watch didn't have a snug fit to the wrist. But if you look at these female end links, as you can see, it allows the end of the bracelet to articulate more and therefore that pulls the end link in the bracelet closer to the wrist. So the head of the piece and the end link of the bracelet give a snug fit to the wrist. So I really like the execution of the female pivoted end links. They are an improvement and that is one of my favourite improvements of this V2 over the previous V1 version. Now there is another improvement to the bracelet. They have improved the quality of the finishing throughout, the brush satin finishing and also the mirror polishing to the Beads of Rice style bracelet. Flawless mirror polishing to the flanks, no sharp edges whatsoever. And one thing I like is they have now made the Beads of Rice style bracelet. The five links are all independent. If you look, they are all separate. The three mirror polished center links are now separate Beads of Rice style links rather than being one three link piece, which looks like three independent links. So as you can see, each of the five links now articulate, including the three center links. They are very flexible. So the articulation of this V2 bracelet is better than the V1. It flexes more and therefore it articulates around the wrist better to give a more comfortable fit. So the comfort level is better, the finishing is better, and I like the fact the three links in the center of the five link bracelet are now separate. They now articulate independently. So it is an improvement. So it's a high quality bracelet on the V2 and a high quality female pivoted end link used on the head of the piece, which again is an improvement. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet, I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and I'm pleased to report it fits my eight inch wrist no problem whatsoever. This will easily fit up to an eight and a half inch wrist. I can in fact slide an index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times. So if you have a large wrist of eight inches, this will fit as you can see. Very comfortable fit to the tonneau cushion style case. As you can see, the 44 millimeter lug to lug measurement gives a very snug fit to the wrist. And as I've discussed, the use of female pivoted end links now allows the end link in the bracelet to articulate better. If you look, there's no gap. It pulls close, it fits snugly to the wrist. It pulls down the tonneau case more snugly to my wrist than the, v the V1's male end link. So this, that is an improvement. The extra articulation of the three pivoted uh, center links in the Beads of Rice style bracelet also work better. It flexes more around the wrist, as you can see. So very snug fit to the wrist. Now it is a large piece at 43 millimeters. It does wear with wrist present, but however, it doesn't have excessive heft, which is a surprise. With all the links in the bracelet, it is 157 grams, and that is a surprise. So to put that into perspective, with 40 and 42 millimeter pieces, I regard the sweet spot for the heft of the piece to be circa 150 grams on an oyster style bracelet, for example. So this is only 157 grams and it's a 43 millimeter. And as you can see, it does have a large tonneau case. So although it's a large piece and it does wear with wrist presence, it doesn't have a lot of heft and it's surprisingly well balanced. It doesn't feel top heavy on wrist. The bracelet is very well balanced. 20 millimeter lug width, but tapering down to the two button push flip block clasp is very well proportioned and the 20 millimeter lug width perfectly balances the 43 millimeter out of the piece. So it fits very snugly to the wrist. Now the other surprise is, although it has a double dome sapphire crystal, as you can see, it is only 13 millimeters tall, including the double dome sapphire crystal. So it will actually slip easily underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. And it does look like it would be a taller piece. I expected this to be 14 or even 15 millimeters tall, but it is actually surprisingly low profile at only 13 millimeters. The blue tinted AR coating does an excellent job on the underside of the double dome sapphire crystal in reducing the glare. As you can see, it is very effective. 
Very aesthetically pleasing piece and an outstanding homage to the Doxa Sub 300T. They've done a very good job. So notable improvements have enhanced the piece. 200 meters of water resistance, which is very good. So let's test the bezel action. And I'm hoping that this is going to be like the V1, which had excellent bezel action despite the tachymeter markings. It now looks better with a feet scale. Nice light resistance, even clicks all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation. No lateral side to side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. So this is a good tight bezel action. Nice crisp loud audible clicks to the 120 clicks. Let's just check the alignment. Excellent. So no lateral side to side play, no back play, perfect alignment. This is a very well executed bezel on the V2 version and I like the feet scale as I've discussed. The crown is solid stainless steel as you can see, no old finish and it's signed with the Tactical Frog brand emblem to a high standard, mirror polishing throughout. Let's test the action. Silky smooth, this is a very good crown action. Silky smooth interface between the internal thread of the solid stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. The Seiko NH35A has a characteristic pop which pushes the winding stem out of the movement. In the first position, it's the manual wind position, and one can manually wind the NH35A to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. Absolute pleasure to manually wind it. One can feel the tension gradually building up in the mainspring. So pulling it out to the first click position is the date setting position. If you look closely at the date complication at three o'clock, you can see the quick set complication works as one would expect. So very good complication to have the quick set date function. Pulling it out to the final click position is the time setting position and that hacks the movement. You can see how I have now hacked the movement. I've stopped the second hand dead and it's now in the time setting position. Silky smooth, it's got the characteristic light resistance in the gearing to the NH35A. Absolute pleasure to set the time, so it works perfectly. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing it back down. Absolutely silky smooth, immediate thread pickup. This is a very well executed screw down crown. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters of water resistance, which is very good. Very smooth threading. Tactical Frog deserve full credit because this is a low tier piece. It's 179 US dollars. But one is getting the kind of crown action, the crown execution that one would expect on a mid tier piece costing in excess of 500 US dollars or a high tier piece costing in excess of 2000 US dollars. So it really is an outstanding screw down uh, crown. And I, I really like the action of it. It feels silky smooth and it screws down. It immediately pick, picks up with the thread and it screws down very well. So solid stainless steel screw down case back, which also provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. Beautifully engraved with the Tactical Frog brand emblem and also the specification of the piece. Brush satin finish to the center section, which contrasts with the flawless mirror polishing to the circumference. Very nicely executed screw down case back, as you can see. And they deserve full credit because again, the finishing to this solid stainless steel screw down case back is very good. It's the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a mid tier piece, not a low tier piece costing only 179 US dollars. The end links are a good tight fit to the case and they're also very well finished as is the brush satin finishing to the underside of the case. So I'm very impressed with the case finishing, the bracelet finishing and the end link finishing throughout, including the screw down case back. Right, so let's test the loom and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Now I've got high expectations of the loom use because it's C3 Superluminova, which is a personal favourite of mine. And on the V1, the C3 Superluminova was very good quality. So I'm expecting this V2 to have equally good quality loom. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This really is top grade C3 Superluminova. It's glowing very brightly, and it's continuing to glow for a good length of time. Good thick layers of loom apply to the minute hand and the hour hand, and one can also see the loom dots on the sweeping second hand. The indices also allow for large loom plots and several layers of C3 Superluminova to be applied. So good symmetry to the dial. The absence of the index at three o'clock is acceptable due to the date complication. 
I like the fact they've moved the loom pip on the bezel to the outer portion which rotates and as you can see the loom pip on the bezel is glowing very brightly. The colour match between the C3 used on the hands, the applied indices and the loom pip on the bezel are perfect. So nice bright green tone to the C3. Very aesthetically pleasing and as you can see it's still continuing to glow brightly for a good length of time. So this is good quality C3 Superluminova. They haven't cut any corners and I'm very pleased with that. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. It uses the Seiko NH35A, which you'll all be familiar with, 24 joules. It has hand winding and hacking, which uses for complications. It runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. 40 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable, and it has a stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range, however I'm pleased to report that Tactical Frog are regulating their NH35A movements to a very good standard. This one is running consistently at plus 8 seconds per day, which is very good and certainly well within the minus 20 to plus 40 second per day stated accuracy. So to get a 200 meter dive piece regulated to plus 8 seconds per day at only 179 US dollars is very impressive. So. I think the NH35A is the correct choice for the Tactical Frog Sub 300 TV2. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this V2 is $179. US dollars. Yes, it is unquestionably excellent quality, and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value for 179 US dollars. When it's getting a piece which is loaded with specification, the build quality, the quality control, and also the execution throughout is outstanding. The bezel action is good, the crown action is good, and also the quality of the finishing to the bracelet has been improved with the articulating three mirror polished center links in the Beads of Rice style bracelet. Female pivoted end links, as you can see, are a notable improvement. There is no difficulty now in engaging the spring bar when changing the bracelet for a rubber strap, which was an issue previously. I like the fact the dial's been cleaned up, they've deleted Tactical Frog, and I also like the fact they've updated the bezel, removing uh, tachymeter and substituting it with feet, which makes more sense. It now looks like the Doxa Sub 300T. So there have been numerous upgrades to this piece and I think that Tactical Frog deserve full credit because in a very short space of time they revised the V1 to the V2 version and they made those numerous updates all in one piece. So this really is a better watch overall than the V1. The V2 is a watch that gets many of the imperfections of the V1 correct. Now the important thing is they haven't increased the price. It is still the same US dollars that the V1 was. So one is getting a better watch for the same price, and I think Tactical Frog deserve full credit for that. They haven't increased the price despite making numerous upgrades to the V2. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Tactical Frog Sub 300T V2. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.